Okay, next segment, no brakes. I'm not even gonna dust myself off. Got pitch stone flakes everywhere. And yes, it is a obsidian-like substance. So yeah, you gotta watch those flakes. I can't brush them off in, a, in the usual way because they'll dig right in. Okay, so what am I gonna make out of this? The hardest thing to do is make a barbed and tang because those barbs will snap right off. So guess what I'm going to make? Yeah. You guessed it. That was hard, wasn't it? Let's see. Why do I pick this stuff? Why do I torture myself? Why do I want to make a point that's extremely difficult in this material? Why don't I just leave it as a leaf point, maybe narrow it down and make it thinner? Why? Well, I, you know, you know what they say. What do they say, man? What do they say? Well, in this situation... They might say variety is the spice of life, but I don't know where the variety comes in. I just like the saying spice of life. Any saying with the spice of life words in it, I like it. That's the only one I can come up with. Flint napping is the spice of life. How's that? If you're not flint napping barbed and tangs, then you're not really flint napping. How's that? Yeah, barbed and tangs are only European stuff, man. European stuff is not, doesn't count. Doesn't count. No one wants to see that. This is America. America. No one wants to see them barbed and tanged. Well, speak for yourself, buddy. I like them. Yes, I do. All right. Yeah, I could be, I could be grinding these edges better. That's one thing. <clears throat> I could be regularizing everything. It's another thing. But I like the look of bold flakes. I like the look of random flakes. So I'm not going to do everything perfectly. I like the look of some, sometimes there's a little mistake because it looks like they, the way they used to do it. If someone's telling you and you'll hear me do this on videos. If someone is telling you, back in the day that you should do this, don't do that because it'll be steppy and stuff. Do it this way, avoid steps and stuff. And that's how they did it back in the day. Okay. First of all, if you're telling people not to do something that they used to do because it has a step fracture, don't do it that way. Do it this way to avoid the step fracture and make everything non-steppy. You're not being taught how they did it. <laughs> Hello? If someone's telling you not to do something that they used to do, uh, change the channel. Okay? If that's what you're looking for. If you want to know how they used to do it, you've got to be taught the same things that they did to make the same mistakes. Not just the same successes, but also the same mistakes. If you want to know how they used to do it, you've got to do it in a way that creates the same kinds of mistakes. And how do you know you're creating the same kinds of mistakes? Because it'll be in the points you make. If you make points without those mistakes, you are not making them like they used to make them. Some people have a very, very hard time with that concept. They don't understand it. They go, no, if you have mistakes in your point, that's not how they used to make them. All right. Okay, dude.
Okay. We'll let them talk. We'll let them. We'll we'll let them try to make corrections. They'll they'll come into our comment section and we'll go, they'll go. Yep, I'm not supposed to do it that way because it makes step fractures or it makes uh, tips pop off or it makes islands. They don't care if it was done that way in the past or not. So they're trying to correct the mistakes. Instead of telling you how it was actually done. Do you ever hear somebody else tell you? Another napper, do you ever hear the other napper say, there's there's mistakes on this point, but you need to have that kind of mistakes in order to know how they used to do those. If you have an artifact with that mistake and you make a point with that mistake, it's a good thing. Do you ever hear other nappers say that? No, you don't. That means they're not telling you how they used to be made. Just saying. Okay. I'll keep saying that in videos a lot. It's re it's repetitive, yeah. I'm beating the dead horse again. For those of you who've been watching the channel. But I gotta say it, because it keeps happening. I'm watching other people's videos. Yes, I watch other people's videos. I like actually watching flint napping videos on occasion. I see them make points with none of the mistakes that the originals have. Absolutely none of the mistakes that the originals have. And they say, this is how they used to do them. They did it this way, they did this and they did that, they did this and they did that. See, I finished it. Isn't it great? No mistakes. No bad spots like they used to make them. Uh, dude. Call me irrelevant. I don't know. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some barbs and a tang on this. Now I probably should flatten this base out. That would make it easier. That way I can thin this thin this lower part a little bit more. Make it a little bit easier on myself. Because those notches are gonna be a big pain in the wazoo. All right. And I don't want to hit the this base with a the indirect percussion flaker because the tip could probably pop off extremely fast. Faster than I could say. Oh damn, the tip's gone. Did I use the word damn again? Damn. Here we go. Are we doing it? Is it doing it? Am I getting some? Oh, no way. Did I get some sequential flaking? Oh, boy. I'm excited now, man. <laughs> All right. What are we going to do? What are we doing here? Uh, I'm trying to make it thinner so that my barbs will be okay. Well... What if I just leave it thick and then make short barbs? How's that? I don't have to make deep notches. No one wants to see, see no deep notches. We don't need no stinking deep notches. No. We don't. Yeah. Said no one ever. Okay. How do I like this pitch stone so far? I like it about as much as low-grade basalt. No, low-grade dacite. I like it about that much. There's some better dacite out there. But it's not too bad. 
it does nap well if you're careful. Why am I not using natural tools to nap this like they did back in the day? Because I'm always, i always harping on people. You're not teaching them the way they used to do it. Why don't I teach people the way they used to do it? Well, I've, I've got videos for that. And, but besides, I've always claimed that I don't know how they used to do it. I'm the guy that's always been saying, I don't know how they used to do it. Because it's almost impossible to know exactly how they did it. I don't even know how I do some of my own points. Some of the stuff down here. If I pick up one of those preforms and look at it, let's see, did I use steel or aluminum on that? Um, did I actually use mostly percussion or some pressure right there? I don't even know how I did it. How am I supposed to explain how they used to do it in the past? You riddle me that one, Batman. All right. Anyway. Here we go. I'm going to do a little bit of percussion here just because. Yes, just because. It's like when, when Dad says, Yeah, we got to do it just because he said you got to do it. It's lame. Yep, it's going to be lame. I'm doing percussion just because, and it's going to be lame. Where's my darn? There it is. Keep losing the mallet. Yes, yes. All right, this is risky because it can overshot. It can overshoot. Is there a red light? I don't know. I see some red. Oh, the sun. The sun is creeping in here, hitting my rear view light and casting a red glow. Weird. It makes it look like it's a fiery obsidian. All right. This glove's getting in the way. I bought new gloves, by the way. A lot of good it did me, because they're not that great. What are you going to get for eight bucks? I'm not going to get nothing. Double negatives, man. Double negatives. You ain't going to do no, no good video revenue with double negatives. <laughs> All right, well, this is it. I'm just gonna do the notching. I put the glove back on because I'm gonna be using the little pad for the pressure flakings. And I don't want all those little flakes digging into my hand. All right. Here we go. So that's that's the preform. I don't know if that's gonna that's not that correct, but you know I probably should make it flatter so that these barbs come straight down but you know oh well all right so it's just straightforward i'm going to crunch these in so all you guys who are tired of seeing me crunch in these notches just go watch another channel where they've got some narration that'll put my narration to shame some of these guys are part-time or full-time archaeologists and they their narration is awesome and i'm not even kidding I watch him and I go, dang, if I had that guy's voice for narration, that's what I'd be doing all day. Be narrating stuff all day. Getting paid for doing audiobooks. Talking on podcasts. What is he doing flint napping? Don't you know that flint napping can make you Give you cancer? <laughs> oh yes. All those Karens out there, they make sure you can get something for the dust. Make sure I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm saying they're out there. If you could be do if you could be doing something else besides flit napping. I suppose it's a very difficult choice. Should I do it or shouldn't I? Should I go ahead and continue the flint napping even though it gives me cancer? Are you serious, man? Is it going to give you cancer? Well, 
if you overdo anything it'll give you cancer especially breathing in dust now with this stuff many people don't know this but glass and and dacite and obsidian dust is not as harmful as the rock dust the rock dust actually causes a chemical reaction in the lungs because of the silica the way the silica is structured this is silica as well but it's a different crystal crystalline structure or molecular structure it doesn't cause a chemical reaction with the lungs like rock dust does so it's not it doesn't present a the same kind of hazard just just to be aware just so you're aware a lot of people think the glass is more hazardous it can be for your eyesight i suppose if you get these in your eye but as far as the the dust it's not as dangerous as rock dust just fyi I'm not saying go out and start inhaling a bunch of it cuz it is it is an irritant and all irritants can cause scar tissue scar tissue and reduce lung function but as far as cancer goes there's a not as much of a risk okay now i got to pay attention here cuz these last few crunches are vital this is what usually wipes out the barbs and if i want to be safe i guess i could have a little formula don't go in more than twice the thickness like if your thickness is seven millimeters or whatever six millimeters don't go in more than 12. i mean that's tops but if you really want to be safe you know you go seven and seven you know the, don't notch deeper than the thickness of the point but definitely twice as much is really pushing it and of course you know there are artifacts that push that limit and yes we don't know how they did it but there are flint nappers that can do it in the modern times i don't show that stuff on video because it's too for me it's too stressful too nerve-wracking and i don't enjoy it i'll need i need to be you know off camera with maybe a glass of iced tea Maybe some tunes going, something to ease the stress, and uh, no worries. No worries that day, and then I might be able to do it, and then I won't show anybody because it's mine, 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 mine. So for me to gloat over, not for you to gloat. Do not you you are not to gloat on my stuff. I don't want your gloating all over my stuff. All right. Here we go. I'm trying to sharpen all those dull spots that I put in. All those dull spots. And Lawrence, if you want this point, I'll send it to you. Yes, I will. You want to hunt an elk with it? Be my guest. Do they have elk in Scotland? I think they they do. If not, you can just uh, you know build a build a target that looks like an elk. But keep it hidden because everyone else is going to be shooting at it. <laughs> They're crazy like they are around here. You put a sculpture, or let's say you, you, you create an outline of a deer in plywood. and Maybe you cut out a, po a big old poster of a, a deer that looks lifelike like a, from a photo. A photo poster. Put it on the plywood and stick it up for a target. People are going to shoot at it when you're not looking. They'll have their suppressors and silencers on their weapons and they'll... They'll drive by and they'll see that thing and they'll take a shot at it. 
and you wake up in the morning, you go out to do the archery practice, and you'll notice, wait a second, this is not an arrow hole in my target, this is a bullet hole. It's a bullet hole, I didn't even hear it. Yeah. They're sneaky, I tell you. I don't know how they are in Scotland, but they're sneaky around here. Okay. Yeah, I've not had that happen myself, personally. I've seen it happen to street signs. You know, I live next to the street sign. There's a bullet hole in it. I never hear nobody shoot no guns around here. There's a darn bullet hole in the street sign. They're sneaky. Anyway. You lived in that kind of neighborhood? Oh, yes. I've lived in all kinds of different neighborhoods. All right, so there you go. It's a barbed and tang from Scottish uh, Pitstone, right? Right. Did I get that right? Pitch stone? In case you missed the first part. Dude, the title tells everyone it's Pitchstone, dude. Yeah, yeah, okay. So there you go. Beautiful. If I do say so myself, made exactly the way they did not make it. They did not use steel. They did not talk the whole time to imaginary people with the communication device in front of their face. They did not do it this way. Okay. Actually, this is pretty cool stuff. It is pretty cool. As long as there's no issues with the inclusions, it naps very, very well. And I could probably run some nice sequential flaking. Yes, I know. I'm selling out. If I ever do it, I'll be selling out. Okay. There you go. There's a there's that light coming in from outside. Makes it look like fiery obsidian. Where'd it go? There it is. I'm trying to get a good background. Let's see. Yeah, it's a it's useless. It's useless. Okay, here we go. You can see it now. What do, what do I do in the next video? Do I do more pitch stone or obsidian? No, I'm going to brush all this obsidian off of me and do something that doesn't uh, doesn't give me the eebie-jeebies <laughs> as far as these little flakes everywhere. Okay? All right.